So we had discussion about who are youth and uh, you know the fact that we really want to give consideration for the up to 25 for those with special needs. And I just want to reinforce that 25 years is not necessarily developmental uh, or physical uh, special need. It can be things like living on the street, incarceration, special considerations may be a better word than special needs. You know, when we're talking about the age, the age bracket, okay? So what about our own limits? Do we have our own limits when it comes to working with youth? Right, preparing for the front line, being thrown out there. Here you go, here's the youth center in town. You're the new staff person. You're 17 years old or you're 26 years old and you're going out there on a Friday night to play basketball with a bunch of young people. Are you ready for that? Right, we wanna make sure our staff are ready for that and you as staff wanna make sure that you're ready for that. We also have to make sure we're ready to address the differences because believe it or not, no two young people are the same. There's news, news flash. Right across the headline, tomorrow's Toronto Sun. Just been discovered, no two youth are the same. That's not a news flash for those of us who work with youth. We talk a lot about safety and youth being safe. And it's easy for us to sweep up broken glass because that makes sense. That's common sense for safety. But there's that other thing that hangs out there and that's that emotional safety, okay? Uh, we try as leaders to ensure that kids aren't being bullied. We try as leaders to make sure that, you know, young people feel safe, you know, uh, regardless of their, you know, race, sex, age, beliefs, styles, whatever. We really want them all to feel like they belong. But do we sometimes, as leaders, create some of those ourselves and aren't really aware of it? We're going to do an activity right now that's going to show that maybe we do. And it's really just a chance for you to address your own differences and your own limits and maybe see how you see things from a different perspective, okay? What I need you to do, this is a get up and work kind of thing. Um, I'm trusting that the 24 of you can break into four groups of five and one group of four and gather around the five flip charts that are around the room, okay? So we need, uh, three groups of five and one group of four. And if you can go to the flip chart, I'll give you your next instruction. Within your group, what I want you to do is I want you to find a partner, a group of three. We're just gonna have a real quick uh, heart to heart with our new friends. Um, if you don't know who they are, please introduce yourself and you know, so that you can have the discussion. What I, this is a bit of a reflection exercise before we dive into the big group activity. All right, here's what you're gonna do. What I want you to do with your partner or your group of three is I want you to talk about a time where you felt you didn't fit in with a group, okay? Most people, if not all people, have had that thing happen. You know, where you've gone into a space or you've gone, it, does, it could be today, it could be when you were a young person, it could be, you know, uh, you know when you were a, a kid. But that one time when you felt you didn't fit in. And when you have that discussion with your partner or your group of three, talk about where you were, who you were with, what was going on in the space or the activity, but most importantly, talk about how you felt about the situation, okay? Is everybody ready to do that? Talk about how you felt when you knew you didn't fit in. Okay, I'm gonna give you three or four minutes like to do that. That's what you want them to ride on now for a minute. We'll leave them as five. Okay, <laughs> if we focus back to the group. Okay, good. How about you tell me how you were feeling when you didn't fit in? Anybody got, want to share some of those feelings? Uncomfortable. Isolated? Uncomfortable? Different? Different. Awkward. Awkward? Rejected? Rejected. Anxious. Stifled? Anxious. Anxious? What were you focusing your own attention on at that point? What was that? Surviving. Surviving. <laughs> right? I mean, that's, pretty, that's a pretty animated word. You just wanted to survive that moment, that second. Right? It's our job as youth champions and youth workers to make sure that feeling never, ever, ever happens. And that's tough. 
right? Youth express themselves differently in how they look, how they feel, what they wear, what music they listen to, what part-time activities, extracurricular activities they have, what culture groups they belong to, what social groups they belong to. You know, schools have, you know, their cliques are all still there than when I went to school, and I'll admit it, in the 80s, right? I mean, we had cliques then, too. Oh, power to the 80s, that's right. Power to the 80s. Okay, sorry. Okay, so here's what we want to do. You've got that kind of negative, antsy feeling right now, and that's good, because that's what I want you to ride on for a minute. When I say go, and not until I say go, because that's my magic word, um, there's a piece of masking tape on the side of your flip chart. When I say go, somebody in the group is going to lift that piece of masking tape. Yep, okay. On the pad, there is a photo of a youth, of a group of youth. What I want you to do is to talk and write down assumptions that you make when you see this group of youth. What do you see? Who are they? Okay. I don't want you to have on your youth champion hat. I want you to be John Q. Public on the streets, right? Because we tend to come with open eyes anyways, right? We don't see that they've got 32 earrings in one ear. We don't see that. We just see the young person who comes through the door. Or I like to think that as champions we do, right? But we really have to understand that sometimes we don't just see. We, we, sometimes we do see the 32 earrings, okay? And that's what this activity is about. So what you're going to do is, when I say go, you're going to flip it. You're going to look at it. You're going to be the old lady on the corner. You're going to be the lady in the grocery store. You're going to be the man who's got his car parked at, uh, you know, a, a corner and waiting while, you know, this group of young people are standing on the side of the road beside him. Okay? That's what I want you to think about. Okay? Write down everything. There's no right or wrong answer. It's what you feel, what you're assuming. Um, and what, uh, who they are and how they might behave. Write them down on the, around the flip chart. Not on the photo, please, but around the photo. Okay? Go. Ready? Here's what you're going to do now. I've already told you that my magic word is go. This time when I say go, you're going to rotate one flip chart. You're going to look at what comments are there. You're going to add to it, right? Draw your own assumptions from this new group that you've seen. Who are they? What are they doing? What are they representing? You know, what are our own feelings that we're bringing forward to this group? Okay, you got that? So everybody's going to rotate this way. We leave the marker, right? Yeah, you can leave the marker. Yes, that'd be great. Go. So you guys get to travel over to them. Thank you for the distance, you know. Thanks for running the marathon for me there. How's everybody feeling? Are we a little bit lighter? We don't have that negative yucky feeling anymore? That, that we don't fit in? Because we do all want to fit in. There's some nice engagement happening. People are getting to know each other, introducing themselves to new people. It's good. Okay, let's uh, look at the pictures that are around the room. Okay? And I'm just going to really visit a couple of them, right? We'll start with this one. Uh, five young people. They look nasty, angry, snobby, not very diverse, not approachable. They're not smiling. They may be bullies. They're intimidating. They're clean. They're mischievous, uh, cocky. They've got attitude and are probably the popular kids. Then we go over to the next picture. It's skateboarders, six of them with their boards sitting on a fence. Business people wouldn't like them. They're punks. They're loud. They're up to no good. Skater boys, nothing to do. Slackers, bored. Cool tricks. Drug dealers. Bravado. Right? And for those of you who didn't see those pictures, I said skateboarder, and some of those thoughts went into your mind, right? That people would assume that of skateboarder. The picture at the far end there is a, a group of kids dressed in black, their hair all dyed, challenge other people, want to stand out, fires, I don't care, mods, moody, punk rockers, devil, into art, disconnected, heavy metal, not interested in school, expressing self, have something to say, they're insecure, they're non-athletic, scary, dark, colorful, empowerment, stick to their own group. Satanic cults, artsy, goth, right? You're nodding your heads because you're thinking, yeah, that's, that's who those kids are. <laughs> Over here, you've got uh, five girls. 
They're called the mean girls, the drama queens, the gossip, the cliques. Uh, rich, pampered, privileged, cheerleader, easy. Try anything party girls. Babysitting club, they're genuine, they're long-term friends. Uh, somebody quoted the traveling pants. <laughs> right? Was that you? Jason, you're at one with yourself. That's good, buddy. <laughs> we'll try new things. Okay? That's who this group is. And behind me, we've got uh, six boys leaning over a fence. They're nerds, books, smart, video games, charmers. They want to fit in. Not necessarily the cool kids, but they're squeaky clean. Kids who won't get in trouble, non-threatening, involved in sports, innocent, family-oriented, popular, the leader. They're a bunch of mama boys. <laughs> That's what somebody said. These are assumptions people are drawing. I'm going to give you the reality check. This group is a provincial-level girls hockey team gold medalist. This is a retraining camp, boot camp for boys who are in trouble with the law. They're now, they're on their way home. It's their uh, leaving the day. This is student government at a local uh, grade eight elementary school, right? They've just got the look of mean on. You know, they can yeah. do that. Your skateboarders are national science fair champion. <laughs> they did it, they did it on physics. Their skateboards were their tools and they talked about drop and level and velocity and all that stuff that they need to. And your gothy satanic cult group are actually the national think bowl champions. They're the smartest kids in the country. And that's what they look like. How are we feeling now? Right? We feel awesome because we're youth workers. We're like, yeah, rock star, these kids are the good kids. Well, and they're going to be. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? That's what we do, right? People assume. Young people walk through the door. And you know what? I'm a youth worker, and I don't like 14-year-old girls. I have one at home, and I love her. But she's a drama queen, and she's all wrapped <laughs> up in whatever's going on in the world, and if it's not the right color, matching the right pant, getting the right fabric, blah, 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 blah. I have an animosity right now towards 14-year-old <laughs> girls, right? All of you probably have that. There's something from your past, in a suitcase that you're bringing with you, that you have your own assumptions. Even as youth workers, we do this. And what we have to do is check at the door those assumptions. If I'm going into a room of youth, and there's 16-year-old boys playing pool, and 14-year-old girls playing cards, guess where I'm going? To the 16-year-old boys, and I'm turning to my partner and saying, take on those girls for me, will ya? Because I don't have the patience for them today. That's the reality. That's what addressing the differences are. That's what preparing for the front line is. It's understanding your own assumptions. Okay? Being aware of them. As youth workers ourselves and as people who, you know, maybe schedule youth workers, it's getting to know what everybody's levels are. I can tell you a funny story about a group of doctors I know who go to New York City every year for a basketball tournament. There's one six foot two black man, he's a doctor in Ontario, and then there's you know, six or seven, five foot six, five foot seven, not super tall, you know, Anglo-Saxon guys. They're in downtown New York at, at uh, Times Square. And of course, Times Square is a tourist capital, right? Like, there's buses coming and going all the time. So the guys are all down there and they're shopping, window shopping and stuff. <laughs> and this bus of older ladies pulls up, they get down, you know, they come off the bus. And without even thinking, the big, tall, you know, a black man was standing there window shopping and his friends all walked away, not realizing they had left him behind. As they turned like this to call him, they watched the women getting off the bus grab their purses like this and hold each other by the hand. But they didn't do it when the other six guys walked by. That's because in their brains they have an assumption of what they're walking into, right? That's an adult version of what we do with our youth. Okay? We have to make sure that we're checking our differences and that we understand them. And it's okay to admit that 14-year-old girls are really difficult, at least for me right now, at this point in my life. Okay? 